introduction ecology ecology introduction ecology is derived from two words eco or oikos which means house or place to live in and logos which means study of therefore ecology is the study of the interrelationships of organisms to each other and to their environment to bring out this let's look at this illustration for a cabbage to grow it requires light rainfall among other factors worms rely on cabbages for survival therefore there exists a relationship between a cabbage worm and the weather ecology is subdivided into two main branches that is synecology and otecology synecology is the study of different species living and interacting in the same ecosystem for example wild beasts warthogs zebras and termites living in the same ecosystem play the video below to see different species of organisms living and Otecology involves the study of a single species or individual group of organisms for example the wild beast in Masai Mara play the video clip to view wild beasts migrating this is a study of a single species terms used in ecology some of the terms that are used in ecology include biosphere habitat niche population community ecosystem and carrying capacity biosphere or ecosphere it is the part of the earth and atmosphere inhabited by living organisms the video shows the biosphere or ecosphere click on the play button to watch the video habitat this is the physical location that an organism lives in with a particular set of conditions examples are a fish living in a pond a grasshopper in a field and monkeys in a forest the pond the field and forests 
are habitats. Some habitats are formed of land, therefore referred to as terrestrial, or can be formed of water, therefore referred to as aquatic. The photographs below show organisms and their habitats. Niche describes where an organism lives and how it lives. This includes the position that an organism occupies in a habitat, such as physical space, and the role the organism plays in the habitat in terms of feeding relationships and interactions with other species. For example, buffaloes, zebras, and egrets can live in the same habitat, but each organism is playing a different role. Giraffes are browsers, zebras, buffaloes, and gazelles are grazers, while the egrets are commensals. Population. Population refers to the total number of a particular species of organisms living in a particular habitat at a particular time. For example, the number of flamingos at Lake Nakuru is approximately 250,000. The photograph shows flamingos in Lake Nakuru. Example 2. The population of people in Kibera as per 2009 census is approximately 170,070. Play the video to view Kibera slum. Community. This refers to all the organisms of different species that live within the same habitat. For example, in an old log of wood, you can find termites, mushrooms, caterpillars, garden worms, and many other organisms living together, though they belong to different species. A community changes gradually from few organisms to many organisms. The photograph shows an example of a community. Ecosystem. An ecosystem is a unit comprised of several habitats and their communities of organisms living together in a self-sustaining environment. Play the video clip below to see an example of an ecosystem. Carrying capacity. This is the maximum population of a species that a particular habitat can support indefinitely under a given set of environmental conditions without depletion of resources in that habitat. Photograph 1 shows an area inhabited by few organisms that the resources can sustain, while in photograph 2, there are very many organisms that the available resources cannot sustain and therefore the resources have been depleted. Factors in an ecosystem. The factors are divided into two groups, namely abiotic factors and biotic factors. Abiotic factors. This refers to all the non-living environmental factors which affect the distribution of organisms in an ecosystem. Light. The sun is the main source of energy for all life on Earth. 
green plants and photosynthetic bacteria need light energy to manufacture food. Animals depend on plants for food either directly or indirectly. Light affects growth and distribution of plants. For example, a forest that has a thick canopy, there is limited undergrowth. But in a well-lit forest, that is, without a thick canopy, there is thick undergrowth. Light intensity is measured by a photographic light meter, while light penetration in water is measured using a Secchi disk. Atmospheric pressure. The atmosphere exerts pressure on the earth. This varies with altitude and determines the relative concentration of oxygen needed for respiration and carbon-4 oxide for photosynthesis. This affects the distribution of organisms in a habitat. Decrease in atmospheric pressure increases the rate of transpiration and therefore the need to conserve water by plants. The illustration shows the variation of oxygen and carbon-4 oxide concentration with altitude and the distribution of organisms. Atmospheric pressure is measured using a barometer. Humidity. Humidity refers to the amount of water vapor in the atmosphere. When humidity is high, there is much water vapor in the atmosphere, creating fog and mist, for example, in the Limuru area. But when it is low, there is less water vapor in the atmosphere, like in the desert, where the sky is clear. This in turn affects the distribution of organisms on Earth. Humidity is measured using a wet and dry bulb hygrometer. Wind. Wind is moving air. It increases the rate of water loss from organisms, therefore affecting their body. It carries water vapor to the upper parts of the atmosphere where it condenses and precipitates as rain. In desert areas, wind aids in formation of sand dunes. Stable sand dunes may become habitats for growth of desert plants. Play the video to see a sand dune being formed by strong desert winds.